<laughs> Hello, ladies, gents, and fellow gamers of culture. Spelunky HD. Spelunky HD is where it's at. What a wonderful experience. The perfect video game. The perfect roguelike. That's how it was touted. That's why it was regarded as before Spelunky 2 came out. People were like, how do you top this masterpiece? How do you possibly do better than Spelunky? with Spelunky 2. The bottom line, the retrospective, the two-hour video retrospective that's coming out in 2026 will tell you Spelunky 2 was not the thing that topped Spelunky HD. Spelunky HD was never topped. It, they are just simply two different video games. I would not call one superior to the other. I wouldn't dare to put down Spelunky 2 as the inferior experience. I would say they are two games different enough to say you may like both equally and play one for a certain type of experience and play the other one for a different kind of experience. Something that I have enjoyed more lately is Spelunky 2, but now and then, I do enjoy the good old vintage classic flavor of one awesome Spelunky 2 run. Let's see if I still can get one Mirion Dara in the Spelunky sphere. I'm going to attempt my best, my absolute brightest, my top-notch video gaming to achieve this. But before... We get into all that. Yes, I have spent a rope to get this point of health. Before I get into all that, today's actually a very special day, this daily challenge, because check out my sponsor. My sponsor is myself. I'm coming out with a new book. How about you sit through this wonderful little video? It's just two, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. And if nothing else, if you have no interest whatsoever in, in my novels, at the very least, maybe you want to sit through for the beautiful, absolutely gorgeous voice of my wife. She agreed to see, she consensually participated in this video. She did a bunch of voiceover alongside with me. It was very fun experience for the both of us. Roll the tape. On February 7th, 2024, a mysterious parcel arrived at our PO box. It was a manila package tied with yarn, heavy, stained, and manhandled ripped in enough places to show the reams of paper bundled inside. Carefully peeling off the packaging revealed hundreds of handwritten pages. At the top of the stack rested a ripped sheet of lined paper, a concise cover letter that read as follows. To whom it may concern, my name is Lana Terrigan. These are my memoirs. You may find them interesting. Every word is true. You may clean up my handwritten mess as needed, distribute them however you will, but leave nothing out. Not that I could stop you. By the time anyone out there reads this, I will be ashes and dirt. Please tell my story. I'm sick of keeping secrets. Lana Looking closer, the sheets appear to be photocopies of notebook pages exhaustively spread over a copier plate one by one. It stands to reason many other copies were sent out, especially considering White Moth Press is in business exclusively to publish my own novels. We're not precisely a big-name publishing house. I couldn't have been Miss Terrigan's first choice, but the few publishing houses that replied to my request for information complained of understaffing and years-old slush piles. None of them confirmed receiving a copy, so we jumped at the chance. Miss Terrigan's memoir claims to be a true story, but this becomes hard to believe only a few pages in. This is, in fact, a fantasy novel. An engaging, fun, romantic urban fantasy full of magic, and boy, does Miss Terrigan enjoy describing her sexual escapades. The amount of explicit content found in her supposed life experiences makes it a rough fit for Israel's team catalog, but we feel enormously compelled to publish it nonetheless. So, that being said, we'd like to stress this novel is for adults only. These are Lana Terrigan's alleged memoirs, 
authored by Miss Derrigan herself and copied, cleaned up, arranged, published, yet in no way otherwise edited by White Moth Press. Enjoy the ride. We certainly did. I have long debated whether I wanted to let you guys in. Let you guys into the this little meta-narrative that I have crafted. What a propitious spawn for this chest and key. Hell yeah. I was like, hmm, do I want to tip my hand? Do I want to completely fully commit? Or do I want to do bring in the viewers into the meta-narrative? And I have decided, indeed, I will let you know. It's all fabricated. I mean, it's just all the things that I just came up with, much like creating an, a novel. When you write a novel, you make up characters and you make them say and do things, right? I simply decided to go a little bit further with this book and create a meta-narrative narrative around it. It's very simple. It's very easy to understand. The thing that I have, that I have made is very clearly explained in that two-minute video that I interspersed that's not the proper word, but close enough that I uh, put into the into this run. Do I want to go up there and uh, go to the vault? It is quite the chore, especially with three ropes and no way to get around. I mean, I do have this thing that I can maybe waste 30 minutes with getting, trying to, to make it all the way up there, but I'm not going to make it, right? I will make it. I will make it. I will waste my time. Check me out. The web gun is being used in a very non-standard way. I I'm an idiot. This is idiotic. Let's just simply move on. Because the main reasoning, you know, it's all fabricated. I wrote this book for my wife because the quality of her romance novels Let's just say it's lackluster. I often snoop around her shoulder and, and it's like, wow, is it a genre convention? Is it like a, an accepted thing that everybody must do to have terrible dialogue and just super cliched plots or something? It's, just, it's weird. Okay, so, you know, I was like, I'm going to do you better, baby. I'm going to create a craft a novel just for you. It will be a beautiful narrative. Of course, I'm not somebody that gets into... You know what? Just in a rope here. It's totally warranted. It's murder this... Oh, it's just too damn powerful. Uh, I'm not somebody that is super into uh, romance novels, or rather at all. So, in fact, I see them as... I see that as a boon. Crafting this this uh, novel that I came up with because it's like I am not aware of all this silly nonsense tropes that they will indulge in and just be like overused and all that stuff anyway what I'm trying to say it's like this novel that I have put out it has one priority it was the maxim the number one thing that I had in present in my mind at all times while writing it we need to trigger that arrow trap. But it's not the thing that I have present in my mind. What I have present in my mind is that this has to be fun at every turn. There cannot be a page where I didn't have fun writing it and the reader didn't have fun reading it. And I think it will be very apparent if you decide to give it a chance. Right now, as of the posting of this video is on pre-order it shouldn't be amazon is being kind of screwy oh yeah oh yeah murder at a distance baby <laughs> uh, amazon is being kind of weird i'm just letting it do its thing eventually it should come out of the pre-order period it shouldn't be i thought that it would not be but you know i'm just i'm just dealing with it eventually it will it will just be available for purchase like it's supposed to be Mm, but, of course, I will repeat, reiterate, must drill it into the minds of everybody listening. 
if you're underage, do not purchase this novel. I mean, you can buy it. You buy 10 of them. But do not read it until your 18th birthday, okay? I want to get a weird email from your parents. They discovered you. They uh, were looking over your shoulder and caught you reading a spicy scene. And they are like, Mommy, I am 12 and what is this? And you show them the narrative of all the despicable sexual acts in there. <laughs> and then I get a lawsuit on my lap. Ornery parents saying, You filthy, disgusting, liberal. What have you done to my child? I do not allow the teaching of these terrible things. You are a terrible influence. I'm going to get the YouTube police involved. The FBI has been contacted. Groomer accusations seem common. I don't want any of that. So, please, do not even do it. Do not even email me about it. Oh, it's so weird, man. I know there's, you know, especially being a Spelunky gaming channel primarily. There are, there used to be more. But there still are people uh, that are, you know, not fully into their adult years who watch this channel. Let's do something like this. And sometimes I'll get an email from a particularly enthusiastic person. And I'll respond like, you know, without even thinking about it. Like I would talk to any other adult. And at, a, at one point or another... Whoa, this guy was extremely <laughs> extremely close to actually shoving a mouthful of shotgun pellets into my rectum. Because, you see, he was spitting them. Or maybe he will make this make me swallow them and then make me spit them and then put them up my butt for a little bit of lubrication or something. I don't know. But anyway, we'll get these emails sometimes. Really already, huh? And at some point, like, there's a... I reply, and then I get another reply, and that's when I realize, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This person is 12 years old. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'll, I'll maybe crack a joke, maybe uh, a little inappropriate, before I even know that, because it, I just didn't even consider that I could be talking to a minor. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here, I am right now trying to beat the allegations. That's all I'm trying to do. The inevitable grooming accusations are coming. I need to, like, get ahead of them. And that's why I'm telling you, it's all accidental. It's all completely coincidental. And certainly, certainly incidental. Anyway. I don't know what I was getting uh, with all that. I, I kind of lost track of <laughs> what I was, the point I was trying to make. You know, kind of hard to make a million dollar when nothing wants to cooperate. These levels are ass. I hate everything about them. These shops contain nothing but despair. Kali is playing hard to get. Everything is against me. Absolutely atrocious. Let's go back. I really don't want to spend another rope. I think I'll spin a bum to get this moron out of there. Come down here, Adam. I loathe your very existence just because you have a stupid face. All right, put a rope that there. Get me some capala. Oh yeah, baby. More blood for me. Feels great, man. Just like riding a bicycle. I did boot up Spelunky. I did boot up Spelunky yesterday to be like i'm not going to go in like, oh the controls feel so weird but you know the usual narrative that i always have when going back into spelunky after a while i made it a point to be like i'm not going to be fully incompetent like i'm not who i used to be in spelunky hd you know i am rusty for sure but i didn't want to be like oh geez oh this feels strange <laughs> same old usual nonsense anyway i'm going to just leave Unfortunately, no money-making opportunities here so far. 
Hopefully we can turn this around. This is a very, very poor run so far. Already clamoring for my death. All I did was show my mug. Did he maybe smell my terrible body odor? I have neglected to shower for three weeks. Trying to beat the Am Asmund Gold record. Still uh, a couple months to go. But, you know, I'm trying to get it, get it done. Anyway, back to... I don't want to belabor the point. A subsection of you guys could not care less about my novelist endeavors. So I don't want to, you know, to overdo it. Just to reach that bottom line of saying, Please, Baba Book, I really appreciate it. It's cheap as dirt. <laughs> it's a really cheap purchase, especially if you get the ebook. And, uh,. Uh, email me if you want a review copy and we'll have the gentleman's agreement that after you read it you'll leave a review on Amazon or and or Goodreads you know because that is like the most valuable you can do for a budding author like myself a struggling little fella a blue collar worker with aspirations like myself you can Give me some social proof. Give me a little bit of that approval by committee. This was a terrible mistake, by the way. I have done a terrible thing. Uh, hopefully, this bomb that's going to attach to one of their foreheads. Holy crap, brother. They can get me. They can get me up here. The run could be over. It's Jover. I am by done. <laughs> if nothing else. Ah! No! Yes! No! No! Jump! Oh, it's over. It's Jover. It's Jover. Oh man, that was absolutely ter terrible. At least we beat Nolan the Femboy. <laughs> Show me those overall scores. Still somebody. Man, I could have had that. Could I have a number one? We're going to adventure mode. I'm not going to leave you with blue balls of 15 minute daily challenge. I was, I really had my hopes up. I was like, man, uh, let's go in there, have a, a good ice caves ghosting session. It's going to be great for the good old times. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. That explosion threw a freaking shotgun up on my head destroyed me forever if that bomb had attached properly to one of their foreheads everything would have been different we would still be talking about whatever the hell i was mentioning it has completely departed my brain whatever the hell i was in the middle of saying literally a minute ago it is completely insubstantial right now it is fugazi Ether lost to time and space, never to be retrieved again, unless I were to listen to the video again, which I will not. I always pick the side with the without the cobwebs, and I always, always mess it up. All right, well, I am pushing this block to avoid an arrow trap. That is the, the lowly status that I have descended upon. Just put me on my misery, brother. I hate this. I hate everything about this run. We're going to restart. Hit the space button instead of the quick restart. Restart. Get ourselves a jetpack and a matok in the shop. Not a teleporter, please. Teleporter is just instant death for me. It, and it is guaranteed instant death because I cannot help myself but get it. I must have it. And I will inevitably teleport into a solid wall. So I would rather not even have that that impossible to avoid temptation. That being said, uh oh. <laughs> you thought you thought that I had it perfectly I had it done perfectly, but no. I messed up terribly. At the very last second, at least we can still whip arrows around these parts. Absolutely shameful display, brother. Shameful display. It is truly 
absolutely atrocious. The main topic, other than, of course, the release of the new novel, took me about a year and a half, more or less, to put that book together. The upside of writing a book and just making it fun, it's like it really takes off the pressure of of everything being like super strict and you know the, the obviously I went hard on making sure everything was coherent once I was done you know I went back and edited but usually I am a lot more strict with how I draft with this one it was very loose just just making fun brother it will fit later just make it fun and that is that is the philosophy it really worked out I had a really good time uh, I'll definitely just do it again. Absolutely. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about, besides that, was the what I started with, which is the now that we are several years, several years. I don't know why I went to into this strange accent. <laughs> I don't even question it. Just, just consume product. Um, several years out of Spelunky Two. What? Please. Ninja, please. Revenge must be had. Uh, Spelunky 2, kind of like a bit, a little bit of a, a look back, a retrospective uh, comparison as well. Okay, this monkey refuses to comply. Let us simply carry on. A little bit of an informal retrospective of how the experiences compare and you know it's a topic has been discussed quite thoroughly so i'll mostly give you my personal impressions which is expanding on what i said at the at the beginning really does not feel like spelunky 2 i don't know if that was Derek Hughes' goal uh, uh, topping everything spelunky hd did I don't know if he ever stated, like, oh, let's make Spelunky HD but everything I wanted it to be. Was that the stated goal of Spelunky, of Derek Hugh? Not sure if it was. If it was, I think he failed at that. Obviously not catastrophically. What was that? I, I have no idea, brother. <laughs> uh, if that was his goal, he did not accomplish it 100%. Spelunky 2 is an excellent game. In many ways an improvement but overall I would judge it as a different experience one that is not necessarily better I definitely would not say it's worse but it's like on par they have different feels there are two different games and you get kind of different things out of it Spelunky 2 feels like it's a lot more focused on I don't know, creating a really tough challenge for a roguelike. He went all out on the Splunky 2, on the on the roguelike difficulty and seeing how far he could push that without it becoming atrocious, you know, without it becoming a deal breaker. Certainly not a deal breaker for me, but it was for quite a few people. I often get those comments saying, uh, Splunky 2 really uh, missed the mark for me. Splunky HD had the perfect balance between difficulty and fun. Splunky 2 tipped it too far in the difficulty. And, you know, something I've mentioned many times, especially about rants with the Cosmic Ocean and stuff like that, it's like uh, many of the things in Splunky 2 feel like a chore. Like, uh, uh, I think the core of the problem in Splunky 2 is that there are too many fixed things in runs it does not have enough variety of the roguelike genre i feel like it was a big mistake to make it guaranteed you get certain things in certain levels such as guaranteed turkeys in dwellings guaranteed boss fights guaranteed madame tusk why not make it something that may or may not happen in your run oh look this run Happened to be a Madame Tusk run. This run is one in which you can get the incredible flying monster. Obviously, I would give some way to reliably get through the, you know, a no percent run needs to be viable 
all the way to the Cosmic Ocean, I feel. You can't require the game to give you certain items to get to the ending. Although that is also a valid approach. Is every Isaac run viable? I guess technically it is, but uh, you will not catch me. You will not catch me dead attempting a blue baby run. Trying to kill, what was it, Hush with zero damage upgrades. Uh, that's not going to happen, right? So similarly, Spelunky could have gone that way. Of, you know, look, if you don't have the items, don't even try it. But I don't think that would have been a, a correct way of doing things either. Um, think, oh, wow. Oh, wow, no. No, don't like this. Don't like this. All right, good stuff. <laughs> Let me murder you real quick. Take my revenge. Go back to this scum lord. There you go. All right, so we have a maniac back here. And he's going to be a problem, right? Come over here. What? <laughs> it was all, all planned out. <laughs> and that son of a bitch with the hyper armor. I had a beautiful plan. It worked out beautifully. And there is the hyper armor. Cheating! Thankfully, though, I had enough health to tank it. Absolute nonsense. <laughs> Not right. Not right. I was feeling so confident with my stumps. I was like, man, I'm feeling good. That's not going to work out unless I get lucky. Did not get lucky. Blow him up, baby. Eventually, one of these ones will reach his anus. Don't worry about it. I have plenty to spare. Nothing else. He will get killed by just falling down the bottom. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Clearly, I'm not leaving without a pile of explosives. Mm. Anyway, I didn't want to the the this incredible pile of thoughts that I have for you to be all about bashing Splunky 2 because I really don't feel negative about Splunky 2. I don't have a negative 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 thought in my body. Actually, that's not true. I do have plenty of negative things to say about Splunky 2. Overall, I love the game, is what I'm trying to say there. Oh my God, all these delicious, delicious bombs. Can you imagine a world in which I left without collecting that? Foolishness. Um, but, you know, Spelunky HD truly was regarded as, man, this is like the perfect video game. This is such perfect balance. It is so well done. And uh, certainly, I, I will be hard, you will be hard pressed to find someone that has that opinion about Spelunky 2. They will tell you, even I think the biggest proponents, even good old friend of the channel's Xanagir, who, you know, is a, a bit of a hype man, I think by his own admission, he will tell you. He is quite the hype man for anything Derek you related. Uh, I would think he would be hard pressed to say Spelunky 2 strikes that quote unquote perfect balance that Splunk HD did. But then he will certainly go out of his way to extol the virtue of, of Spelunky 2, and I would agree with them at like a 95% rate. You know, don't, don't, I really don't want this to come across as a, a Spelunky 2 hater kind of thing. It's just kind of just thinking about the, the two video games. Okay, okay, that is done. No more crazy lunatic jumping around. Um, so think about the two video games and evaluating them on their own merits. Because, you know, it's so easy to compare Spelunky 2 to Spelunky HD. Let's say Spelunky 2 simply came out and it wasn't Spelunky 2. Spelunky HD never existed. And Spelunky 2 is just Spelunky. What would we feel about that video game? What would we all be saying about that video game? Would we be saying, man, this game is just the perfect balance. This is just absolutely excellent. I think we would be saying this game is absolutely excellent. Would we be saying this is the perfect video game? I think the gripes would 100% exist just the same. Uh, regardless of the comparison, 
to what came before. Perhaps they wouldn't be so noticeable, right? It wouldn't be so easy to put your finger on it. It is so easy to compare to Splunky HD and say, there should be more variety of mood levels, like there was in Splunky HD. There should be not so many uh, regimented things. This quest line is too freaking long compared to what you could do in Splunky HD. Actually, I wouldn't say that's a negative. Think about Splunky 2. That's another thing that seemed very apparent at the time and also as a retrospective. Their cure was really focused on putting in those secrets that the community would have a hard time finding. Like, I cannot fathom how the hell you even discover some of the things in Spelunky 2 without being told. Would I have ever figured out the Ushabti? I think I would have. Uh, what am I thinking about? I think, yeah, the, the Cosmic Ocean. I don't think I would have figured out to shoot the arrow at the chicken egg. Did I at the time? I don't think I did. It's been a while, so I don't even remember whether uh, it was a comment that let me know. It was, you know, the percolating common knowledge letting me know that, hey, you had to shoot this arrow into the eyeball to get to the Cosmic Ocean. It was kind of like a big deal when it was discovered, right? And that is something that I feel Derek, you felt enormous glee about <laughs> when it first came out. That oh wait a minute, this this 99 levels no nonsense exists. At first, the entire narrative was like, is this infinite? Does it ever end? Because you know nobody had any clue that at 99 it will give you constellation. It just felt like a completely alien territory. No, you know what I'm saying, you were there, or maybe not. Maybe I'm giving you completely unknown information. I was I was one of the OGs, I was there for every minute of it. But it's also a lie. I've always been uh, quite lax on my involvement in the quote-unquote Spelunky community. The entire concept of a community. It's just something I'm averse to in the first place. I'm this... You know, having this this mentality in my head of always being this lone wolf. And I don't see it as a positive at all. Don't think I'm bragging or saying, oh yeah, look at me, I'm so cool. I'm like, this is a, a almost a disability. It's uh, a hindrance to everything I try to accomplish. I hate collaborating. I, that's, that's a strong word. It's not hate. I... I'm anxious and uncomfortable collaborating, even when I really like the people involved. I think about it, and it's just something I don't want to do, because I don't feel good. And uh, no amount of exposure will change this, I don't think. It's the same thing as the uh, performance anxiety that only allows me to record con- Wow. 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 <laughs> I thought I had a little bit more time before that blast happened, okay? Uh, it's like the same performance anxiety that prevents me from comfortably recording content. I hate to say content. Recording videos when my wife is home, even though she has expressed a bajillion times that she actually enjoys my videos, she likes it, she likes that I do this, she supports it 100%, still, I am always just anxious. Die, bitch. Uh, if she's home, like, I just, uh, I don't feel good talking to this microphone. I don't! <laughs> she is home right now, uh, but I don't get it over it because it's, um, you know, the release date of my book. So I was like, I'm going to get this this video done. And indeed, I'm having a, a grand old time. But there is a closed door, a whole story, and a blaring TV separating us. So, you know, there's that, that big buffer in my mind. It's like, eh, she's home, but she's not really home. So I, I can actually be a little more loose with my tongue. I know that I have a class mechanic. I just want to see this man explode, okay? My, my dear revenge has been attained. 
Ah, yes, watching them die. What a pleasure. It's just, that's another thing where I feel this may be the number one thing that I feel is worse in Spelunky 2, and that is shopkeepers. I absolutely understand how DirectQ did not want to make them the biggest antagonist anymore in Spelunky 2. Spelunky HD did a great job at that, of creating absolutely insane shopkeepers that are just, you know, complete psychos. And he was like, eh, let's, let's do something different with this one, right? And we got the neutered va version of Spelunky 2, where it's more quantity over quality approach. That's their approach to trying to kill me. Where a single Spelunker, a, a single shopkeeper, not a big deal. But hey, if five of them are trying to stop you, it becomes a little bit more challenging, right? <laughs> so, uh, not so much, not so much of a fan of the shopkeeper in, in Splunky 2. Because they're... It's like throwing 20 Michael Myers at you. Kind of cheapens the experience for the one Michael Myers that terrified you when you were seven years old. It's like... Now that I'm finding 20 of them and I've killed 19, I am not as intimidated by a singular shopkeeper. Of course, a group of them are indeed still a force to be reckoned with. Just like if you were facing a single spider, you can easily stomp it. If you're facing a group of 2,000 spiders, suddenly you're not so brave anymore to stomp that uh, that initial spider in the in the... Oh, <laughs> in the front lines, because they will eat your entrails as after they swarm into your mouth. My apologies if you are arachnophobic and I just created a horrible nightmare inside your mind. Oh, that's right. The, the crocmen do not die in, in Spelunky HD. They just infinitely teleport until they go into the wall. Let's go through here to the exit. Definitely miss, by far, shopkeepers in Splunky HD. The, that feel, that, that, that deeply personal hatred, is just not present in Splunky 2. Shopkeepers are a nuisance in Splunky 2. Especially because of the way forgiveness is. It's, like, it's so easy to farm forgiveness, steal their stuff. It's, it's, they, they were... The individual shopkeepers was trivialized and something very valuable was lost in the process. I feel like uh, it was definitely a misstep. Like, I, there's not that many things that I would say are outright mistakes in Spelunky 2. I would call it a mistake. The way that shopkeepers were kind of cheapened and uh, produ mass produced, like literally mass produced <laughs> in the mothership. Uh, I get why it was done. I don't think it should have been done, and that is my opinion. I'm trying to think of other like outright mistakes and not just stylistic choices that I don't agree with. And there's really not that many. I already mentioned, you know, how the game should have leaned on randomness way more. Ver run variety is severely lacking. Shouldn't be there another shopkeeper waiting for me here. I guess not. Hussa! Um, I would, I think I would definitely count it as a mistake. The lack of run variety towards the legit. Like this is all from the pr perspective of somebody that has played the games for literal hundreds of hours, right? If you're somebody that just goes into Spelunky and plays it until it's beaten and then moves on to the next game like a healthy person and not the obsessive weirdo that is talking to you right now. <clears throat> From that perspective, I think Spelunky 2 did everything right or, or close to it, right? I mean, <clears throat> the new player experience, it is so much more challenging but rewarding discovering all this stuff was a blast it was a great time of course all the visuals were improved and all that stuff so there was the night nice flashy new stuff uh, happening inside of your face and overall 
if you just want to play the game once until you finally ma make it to that cosmic ocean, and then you realize I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through 99 levels of this shit. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so you know, th this is my victory. If you play like that, then the comparison becomes a lot, a lot more difficult to evaluate. What, what was this? bomb cascade what what were you expecting it to to do what was that <laughs> ah, foolishness foolishness i say unfortunately i completely fubarred my chance at hell but it's okay i forgive myself i am sure you forgive me you have no option but to forgive me or i will find out how you live where you live and then grovel at your feet but do you think I will resort to violence? No, I'm not a violent person. I will just find where you live and and ask for forgiveness in person. That's the way I would go about it. If you evaluate the games from that perspective, they become a lot more equal. And I would definitely say, I don't know if definitely, but I would say, I would say Splunky 2 comes out on top. If you see it as, not really as a roguelike that you play for hundreds of hours, but as an experience that you just want to beat. Splunky 2 has a lot more to offer. But if you see it as something you want to speedrun, something you want to just play for a long, long time in the vein of all the, you know, the great roguelikes, Splunky HD may have an edge on that. But a very, very razor-thin edge. At least we got a victory. Unfortunately, it was not able to get my million Dara. I think I'll try again. Splunky HD is such a great time. It strikes that perfect balance, especially, you know, in relation to my own video gaming skill. Splunky HD is on the spot, the perfect spot for me. Splunky 2 goes a little higher than my skill uh, comfort zone, <laughs> you know? I still love it, but it kills me a little too often for me to have fun consistently. Either way, check out the novel if you are of age. It really is a lot of fun. Has my wife's stamp of approval. I don't think you would regret it in the slightest if you give it a chance. So go for it. Have a great time. See you on the next one.